Welcome to the Bold Money Revolution podcast. This is your source for straight talking, no fluff, business and high performance conversations that add real depth and value to the way bold leaders live, work and thrive. I'm your host, Tara Newman. I'm here to show you how to optimize your performance as a leader so that you can grow a business that is profit rich, efficient, and allows you to generate real tangible wealth for yourself and others. We are here to help you lead with your values, to perform without overwhelm and burnout, and to do your most important work in the world. Hey, hey, Bold Leaders. Welcome to the Bold Money Revolution podcast. I'm so excited to be here today with Kelly Ruda, a friend and colleague of mine. And today we are going to be the purveyor of hard and uncomfortable truths, which is like actually one of my favorite things to be doing these days on this podcast, because as I was just telling Kelly, 91% of my Instagram audience was polled when they were polled. They said 91% said that social media is over glamorizing small business ownership. And this is something that is really important to me that we don't do. It's really important to me that we have honest and transparent conversations. And what is actually honest and transparent versus what people want you to think is honest and transparent. So like, I'm a big proponent of like, if someone is showing you their income report, that doesn't necessarily mean that's honest and transparent. If they're posting screenshots of their Stripe or their PayPal or whatever, that's not necessarily the honest and transparent conversation that we need to be having. We need to be talking about the things that we're leaving unsaid and the things that we are scared to talk about and the things that, to be honest, I don't really want to talk about. So Kelly, this is why I'm so glad I'm here today, because this is my favorite thing to do is talk about the uncomfortable things, which is why people don't invite me to parties. I get it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So listen, Kelly and I are going to take a crack at this, but we're going to do it in a way that is brave, is passionate, is from a place of service. And from a place where we really are going to ask you to engage in this conversation and and come find us later and share your takeaways with us, um, please realize that this conversation that Kelly and I are having is not an easy conversation, Mm -hmm. that it's not easy for either one of us and that it's taken years for me. I'll speak for me first, Kelly. It's taken me years of mental and emotional work the deep inner work to be able to hold space for these conversations without fear of retaliation, of bullying, of being canceled, you know, of people talking about me behind my back and and all those things. So Kelly, welcome, introduce yourself, share your take on this. I'm going to keep it short because I just can't wait to dive in and talk about all of this, but I'm Kelly Ruda. I was a clinical psychotherapist in practice and in a public school based setting for 20 years. And about it's between six and seven years ago, I really felt a very strong calling to step in and serve women in a different way. I was seeing a lot of women in my private practice get their mental wellness really stabilized and grounded. And they were all wanting to fulfill business dreams. And they were asking me, can you continue to help me? And and I couldn't because it was unethical for me to act as a therapist and do that, run it through insurance, all of those things. And it really gave me significant pause. And I hired a business coach thinking, oh, I'm just going to do therapy a different way. I'm going to grow my practice a different way. And what I realized was, oh, there's a whole gap in this industry. This industry is doing some beautiful, amazing things. And there's some scary missing pieces and some scary things going on, especially in the online space. And I think I could be of service. So I I jumped in and now I'm a CEO development strategist, and I work on those inner things that were you were just referring to so that people, women, build businesses that they don't have to squeeze their lives into. They build businesses that are of service, but also really help them live lives that feel good and are fun and are financially stable and all the things that matter. So I'm dying to get into this conversation. Enough about me. 
Yeah, you know, it's really important to Kelly and I that that as business owners in your pursuit for financial freedom, personal freedom, impact, whatever, that you don't sacrifice your mental health along the way. Yes. We, we all have mental health. And it's something that we all need to, in my opinion, put at the forefront of our, our business strategy. And so what I kind of want to kick off, and so also what I also what I want to say is Kelly being coming from you know a therapy perspective and, and having a background in clinical psychology and me having a psychology background, I think we tend to, one, naturally stand out. I think we tend to, people perceive us as high trust mm-hmm. leaders, which I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. And so I know that I get people reaching out to me and telling me things that they wouldn't normally tell somebody else. And this is even not necessarily clients of of mine, but this is just in general people who need a place to to share something and to to put something. And I always welcome them. I always tell everybody on this podcast, I'm at the Tara Newman on Instagram, please come over and, and, and have that conversation. It's very courageous. I welcome that. And I know Kelly is the same way. Yes. Um, so I want to talk about a little bit, what are some of these things that people are saying to us that they're not saying in masterminds that they're not saying on social media that they're not saying in in programs that they're in mm-hmm. you know what are some of people really struggling with underneath but aren't languaging because we've told them the the, the internet marketing world has told them struggle is not okay yes so there's lots of things there are deep traumas that are sometimes individual in nature but they're also collective traumas and sort of subconscious or unconscious programs that a lot of us have been exposed to along the way. So I'm hearing a lot about, and for the first time, I have to say, it's the first time for a lot of them articulating these things. And so it feels clunky. It feels scary to say and to acknowledge. One of the things that I hope to provide my clients all the time is what we refer to in psychology as an emotionally corrective experience. One of the things that they're coming forward and saying is I've gone to the masterminds, I've gone through these courses, I've gone through the retreats, and I'm actually feeling more traumatized by them. But because they are internet famous people that are running these programs, I feel too ashamed to say it publicly because maybe it was just me. Maybe there was something wrong with me that Mm -hmm. I didn't get those results. Mm -hmm. Why am I not taking a bath in a bathtub full of cash? Why am I not in front of the Eiffel Tower? Why am I not, you know, at a perfect weight with perfectly coiffed hair and wardrobe and all these other things? What, so basically what it boils down to is this, this consistent asking, what is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. Because as your astute Instagram followers have seen and noted, these intentionally curated feeds leave you with this sense of, which is total BS, that small business is supposed to be X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. There's a bunch of things. So the other thing I'm also hearing is about what I refer to as the universal struggle. I, in 26 or 27 years of working with people's minds, have never met a human being that did not have some struggle with, I am not enough. And if you think that your business growth efforts are not going to push that button and push it a thousand times in any 24-hour period somebody misled you. So a lot of this exploration of the question, am I adequate to ask for what I want, to create what I desire, to receive what I desire in the way I desire to do it, meaning in alignment with my ethics, my values, my truth, because a lot of what people are telling me both online and off goes against how I want to do this. So I hear a lot, a lot, a lot of that, which feels very scary for people to talk about in my group program, let alone go on a you know Facebook live or something and, and talk about it. Yeah. I have a couple of things to add to this if I, if I might. 
So what I hear a lot of is unmet expectations, disappointment Mm -hmm. over unmet expectations because, and so I want to preface this by saying half my clients have online businesses, half my clients don't, half my clients don't even have websites or social media. And by the way, they're, they're the ones running the million dollar businesses, Mm -hmm. just, just to flip a script for, Mm -hmm. for everybody. And they don't see their competition. They don't see what other people are doing. They're, they don't have this perspective at all. And then I have the people who I, I work with, who I, I actually love social media because I get to meet these people. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive more into that. But like, you know, there's a lot of unmet expectations. There is depression. There is anxiety. There is anxiety. People are coming to me. I took so-and-so's program and it made me anxious. Yes. I experienced anxiety in the way they've created this container. I've experienced anxiety in the way they run their program. I've experienced anxiety in the way they, they talk to other people. I've had people come to me and tell me that they have been traumatized So one of the biggest objections I get in my programs, I don't know who to trust. Mm -hmm. Um, I had this bad experience and some of them have gone on to say they've been traumatized. Uh, They've spoken up and they have been retaliated against Mm -hmm. by program owner in a number of different ways, including like legal threats. Mm -hmm. Uh, They feel very pressurized. You brought up before while we were talking, um, it being a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. We are seeing uh, the Wall Street Journal just did its most comprehensive study on Facebook. And the, I don't even know what to call it, the harm, the the grave harm, the deleterious effects of Facebook and, and, and specifically Instagram on young girls. Yes. And we're not immune to this. Not at all. And as somebody, and I speak very openly about this all the time, because I think it's, it's difficult to be something you can't see. And I think it's difficult to see something as possible if you don't have an example. So I'm very honest about the fact that I have complex PTSD. I've had it my entire life. And, you know, this idea that So many people involved either in the online business industry or in social media directly do not understand that you can cause an initial trauma or you can re-traumatize people with your practices, with your lack of knowledge, with a lack of ethics, with a lack of guiding principles, with a lack of boundaries, with, I mean, so many things. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me. So as a person who has PTSD, who is navigating this space, it's so obvious to me. And I have very, very strong non-negotiable boundaries for that reason to keep myself, you know, in a good, healthy, stable place. But there are so many people who don't understand how this can have a massive impact on a grown adult, but on kids whose brains are not developed, whose psyches and personalities are not fully cooked, (laughs) as I like to say, Uh, they're extra vulnerable, extra vulnerable. And yet we just keep plugging along like this is not a thing. Yeah. One of the reasons why I have diminished or changed, dramatically changed the way that my company does and uses social media is because I can't handle the responsibility. Mm of the outcomes that could be possibly created by my posts. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the podcast, you're hearing me more, there's more opportunity for me to dive into nuance. I beg people to please, if you have a question about something I've said, ask for, ask me to clarify it. Mm -hmm. And I I do this in my programs as well. Like question me, it helps me think better. It helps me think again. It helps me evolve my, my systems and, and how I'm, how I'm doing things. But, you know, on social media, it's like a very small 
you, it's a sound bite and, and what's, and what's likable and shareable is often hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. Um, we just went, we, this is another thing from the wall street journal. I haven't dug into that report, but you bet your bippy, I will be. (laughs) Um, but one of the things that came out of it is that the most popular posts on social media are popular because of the outrage and anger they're polarizing Mm -hmm. and associated. And it's the comments that it's the outrage marketing. It's the people have commented the most because they've been angry or outraged. Mm -hmm. This is why Ben Shapiro is always at the top of the, who's like posts are getting seen the most. And he's over there crying about censorship, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's because he, he generates this level of anger and outrage among his, his followers. And so I have a feeling I've contextualized a little bit who my ideal client is. And I think that Kelly, you're going to resonate with with what I'm about to say. And I'm, I'm sharing this because I want you to decide what group of these three people you're in. So you know how to access the conversation Kelly and I are having. Mm -hmm. I think it's incredibly important for us to give like our biases and who we're here for and be really clear in our message. And so what really caused me to reevaluate my business, and I should probably do a podcast episode on this, was this deep dive that I did into cult documentaries last mm. year. And so have you seen the, the Nexium one? Just curious. Of course. Okay. Of course. So I, go, I go way down the rabbit hole when it comes to cult. Yeah. Psychology. And so I, I always, I always say, I always preface, don't watch anything on death cults before bed. It doesn't oh, leave gosh. A great night's sleep, mm-hmm. but the Nexium cult was like nightmare fuel for me because it was the personal development space. So if you haven't watched the Nexium documentaries, I think you should, um, especially if you're in this space, uh, they are kind of like landmark type of yes. stuff. And so what I realized from watching these cult documentaries is there's three types of people. There are the people, so you, they get to the Nexium introductory meeting and they're being, they have to dance and they have to do things and that are kind of silly and, and weird. And they're being told that there's this uh, rank system that they get these different sashes and the guy who's in charge, you have to call him Vanguard. And there are people that are listening to this going, fuck no, right. This is I'm out. Like this doesn't, my spidey senses are up. Something is weird. These are the skeptics and they're like, peace out. Then you have the middle group who's like, I'm going to go along to get along. I'm curious. I'm going to see, I'm going to explore. Don't be so close-minded. Let's see Mm. what happens. And they, they get into it. And then something happens and they're like, oh shit, I'm in a cult. And then they wake up, they have their awakening. They have their awareness and their awakening. And then they're on a mission to make sure that nobody falls for this again. And then the third group of people are unfortunately have some kind of, in my opinion, brain chemistry or something that is happening for them mentally and emotionally that has allowed them to be manipulated to the point that their brain is now mush and they, they don't have the ability to think independently. And, and we have to go in and deprogram these folks. And so my clients are actually the ones who go into the introductory meeting and go, this doesn't feel good peace out. They are the square peg and everything is a round hole. And mm-hmm. the way this translates into the online space is they open their app and they're like, no, I don't know. That doesn't really feel good to me. I don't think I'm going to take that program. Well, the way they're doing that is actually disgusting. No, thank you. And the way that they're doing this over here doesn't feel good to my values. Nope. I'm not going to have, I have trauma. There's something that's making me not feel good about doing a Facebook live. So the fact that you're telling me I have to do Facebook lives, nope, that brings up a lot of fear and anxiety. And the more you push me, the more I really am feeling really uncomfortable about this. And what happens to these folks is they actually get shut down. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they they don't see a path for them to get to the place they want to be in a way that is in alignment with their values. So I'm here to help people make more money and more leveraged way with the caveat that it's in alignment with values and strengths and and personality. I'm not here for leverage for leverage sake. Right. Also, another great fit client for me, and maybe you find this as well, is the people who are like, oh, shit, I'm in a cult. I'm done. Yes. And they don't need to be deprogrammed, Mm -hmm. but they need to be given back their intuition. They need to be given, put back in their power. They need to be reminded that. And some of them, 
some of my clients, I'll, they'll say something to me and I'll be like, I know who your mentor was before mm-hmm. me. And that is not your voice. Mm-hmm. Literally, you literally sound, you are mimicking the voice of the person who you were learning from. So I know you're not in your power right now. Now, the people that I cannot absolutely work with and and probably neither you are the people that need to be deprogrammed. And that's actually why I've closed down my one-on-one work right now Mm -hmm. is because I was finding I was getting people who needed too much deprogramming for Mm -hmm. me to, to do the business strategy and, and to get them moving forward, which is something that I want to talk to you about because mm-hmm. you went after Dave, what's Hollis. his pickle? Hollis. Oh, I'll go after him every day, all day, any opportunity mm-hmm. I have. And if you want to throw Rachel Hollis in with him, like I'm here for it. Oh, she's a waste of space. <laughs> she's just like ridiculous, but listen, like I've had that conversation like, it, and I, I don't want to talk about, so I'm, I'm going to do something very to my psychological background and say, it's not about the person. It's about the archetype. However, my mind, you read my, get out of my head, woman, you read my mind. (laughs) Kelly, Kelly did go and put Dave Hollis in his place around something that I want to talk about. So Kelly and I are both, we were just having this conversation and we're both trying to stay away from the word mindset in our work. It's actually in my model. I have a model EMS because it is important, but in terms of like forward facing and things that I talk about, I try not to talk about mindset because it's, and I, and I have actually other approaches before I even talk to you about your mindset because it has been so dangerously misappropriated. Oh yes. I said to you before we started recording, my word for it is it's been absolutely bastardized that word. And so where I used to call myself a mindset coach I refuse to call myself that. And when people refer to me as such, I correct them because that word is triggering and also the number of unbelievably unethical practices and businesses being built off of from people who call themselves mindset experts is frightening to me. Okay. So I want to have this conversation with you and I want people to listen to this. Mm-hmm. And I know some people are going to be triggered by it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I have some mindset coaches who are listening. Mm -hmm. I want you to hang with us because you don't have to believe what we believe to shift your perspective. I want you to be open. And I want you to acknowledge that Kelly is an expert in this field. I consider myself an expert Mm -hmm. in this field. And so I want to do a couple of things. The one reason my big shift came actually out of the Nexium cult documentary they were running what they called EMs. What would, do you remember what EM stood for? I don't remember. I don't. I remember the context, but I don't remember what the letters stand for. Right. So this was very much what we're seeing in the personal development space. You believe something that the program owner doesn't believe or doesn't think you should believe, and then they get you to shift your mindset to believe the other thing. And until you can believe the other thing, you're not going to succeed. Correct. And this, we see this not only in personal development cults, but in religious cults as well. And so there's a lot of, of crossover there. And that's important to make note of. So tell me what is mindset and how Mm -hmm. do you actually address your mindset. Mm -hmm. So for me, the way that I approach this is extremely comprehensive. And so the way I teach it is you start with clarity of desire. You move into any resistance you have around your desire. We take a look at how your ego impacts that. So you're the voice basically of your ego We take a look at the quality of your conscious thoughts that inform your decisions. And then we do a really deep dive into unconscious programming because that's the, what causes the majority of our trip ups, hang ups, blocks, whatever words you want to use resistance has a lot to do with unconscious programming, limiting beliefs. If you're familiar with the big leap, which was written by Gay Hendricks, you know, he talks about upper limits, 
a lot of this comes from the unconscious mind. And then we dive into what does your brain have to do with it? Because your brain has a lot to do with your mind. Because in the end, how you choose to show up or not show up, the decisions you make to grow, change, pivot, scale, leverage your business, and the habits you have around those things, that's really what's going to drive your results. So it's not as much about your strategy and tactics as it is everything behind that. Unfortunately, what I'm seeing is a lot of this pitching that mindset is, and it, I, ooh, as entertaining as I thought the secret was, hmm. I think, unfortunately, it uh, spurred a lot of this very reductionist thinking around energy and around your thoughts is this whole idea of think positive thoughts, positive things will materialize. It's very way grossly oversimplified and it does not take into account any of the other things going on. And as a result, we're seeing a lot of gaslighting in the coaching industry for people who have had real true challenging obstacles because of gender, race, you know, how they identify in terms of their sexuality, where those are, you're not going to just think happier, more positive thoughts and create generational wealth. There are things to be worked through. But, you know, this whole idea of get to your journal and make a vision board and walk around saying positive thoughts all day. Now, that is not to completely dismiss or discount positive thinking or using visualization techniques. There's actual research that shows that these things are helpful. What I say is, however, there is not enough of a nuanced discussion around that being one piece of a much more thorough approach to personal transformation. And it's not, it cannot be about my way, my technique. I am anti guru. And good God, please, can we just stop using that word? And if for one si- second you think Tony Robbins, didn't call his Netflix special. I'm not your guru. Oh my God. That was totally for a reason. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hello. Wake up call. Knock, knock. But wait, can we just, can we, can, so uh, his Netflix documentary was called, I am not your guru. Right. And so NLP we, at its finest, what we know from NLP and, you know, neuro-linguistic programming is yep. that the brain does not hear the word not. So if your brain, and I actually have, I have, and, and like not, and, and don't, and I've actually, mm-hmm. I'll tell you how I've seen this work in a second. But so if he is saying, I am not your guru mm-hmm. and your brain does not he- hear or recognize not what is being said is I am your guru. Correct. And he so, is, this is what all of his training is, everybody, by the way. And he came up with his own and a type of NLP that you can get certified in. This is, this is why we as consumers have to be so much savvier and vet so much better than we're doing right now. And it's a shame because it, that burden shouldn't be on vulnerable people. It should be us. It should be our responsibility. But Tony Robbins is a whole other podcast episode. <laughs> so back to the brain, not hearing the word, not just for a second, mm-hmm. um, John and I, my husband and I were traveling and we were going through security and the security guard said, do not drop your phone and like, or like, do not put your phone here. And mm-hmm. my husband put his phone exactly where he wasn't supposed to put it three mm-hmm. times. It was the first time I actually saw that really working yep. in reality that his brain was hearing, do put your phone here. That's right. Not do not. And like, He's not, my husband's not, I'm this, I'm the one with ADHD. I'm the one with the brain that's like all over the place. So you would expect me to have done something like that, not my husband. And so it was really interesting because that was the first time I actually saw that really working and playing Mm -hmm. out tangibly in action. So Mm -hmm. totally. So can I just say one thing? I'm not saying that there aren't takeaways from NLP that are not both accurate and useful. My problem is in the predatory use of any particular technique. 
Correct. And that is where I have trouble with people who get weekend certifications. I'm now a master NLP, whatever, because I did 48 hours of I don't even know what, and then turn around and use NLP in marketing to persuade people to buy from them. That is really my issue. It's not saying that there aren't some valid things that come from that. It's that the way it's being used is predatory. Correct. I think I know and trust like maybe on one hand, how many people like I know that do NLP that I'm like, yes, she's Mm -hmm. here. He is like 100%. So it's not, it's not NLP or not NLP. It's right. It's more how it's being used. Like, so for example, I think you and I've had this conversation, not going to mention names, but there's somebody who is giving people in her program scripts for emails and marketing and social, and she uses NLP. Mm. but she is not telling people okay. that she is giving them scripts with NLP. So people are now, if you're using her scripts or copying what she does, there is a good chance that you too are using that in your marketing and in your scripts. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. And and that's, I mean, goodness, that's problematic for a, a million reasons, right? But again, <laughs> I'm seeing this everywhere, everywhere. And one of the most common questions I get asked when no one else is around is, are you trained in NLP and do you use NLP in your program? And my answer is always, absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's a question you're getting? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because people find out that this has been used on them in the past, or they work with a coach who says, oh, I'm NLP certified. And then they walk away feeling like they got Ghostbusters slimed with the green gunk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mindset for me is a set of beliefs, attitudes, stories that you tell yourself. And what happens is, is because these have come from somewhere, they just didn't like pop out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. A lot of times these beliefs, these attitudes, these stories that we we tell ourselves are coming from our family, mm-hmm. our TV programs or our government or, you know, society. And they are said so many times they've run, these beliefs have gone over and over and over again, or they've become stories that we tell ourselves over and over and over again, that they have burned neural pathways mm-hmm. in our brain that are not supportive of where we want to go next. Correct. That's exactly Uh, what I teach. Yeah. And so I just wanted to, to kind of, to share that, but that these, I think the important thing to know is that these come from somewhere. Lots of places. And And they're they're coming from our lived experiences. They're coming from our prejudices. They're coming from, you know, I'll give you an example my husband and I have decided that we're going to buy some real estate as an investment. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me a very long time to make that decision because I grew up in a family where my father did not believe in real estate as an investment. Mm -hmm. And he, it was always too much to upkeep, to maintain the, the tenants, concerns about tenants and all these things. And and so it was always something I didn't want to touch. However, when you look at my husband and I and our skill sets, it makes total sense. Mm-hmm. He's, he's very handy. We have a lot of process and procedure and organization that would help with maintaining the property or good communication skills to communicate with tenants and a desire to provide people with actually a great rental experience, right? Mm-hmm. And so I had to really change that mindset. Mm-hmm that belief that I had that was conditioned into me from childhood. And and that's just something super simple, right? Like I just, I'm picking something that's just obvious and simple, but that these things happen all over the place. And and that, that has held me back and it's, it stopped me from getting to where I want to go, but I do not believe in blocks because that is something that is feels that is in immovable fixed. Yeah. You it know, feels and fixed. fixed and, and that's not true. Our brains are very mm-hmm. pliable. Mm-hmm. We always have agency mm-hmm. when we haven't given it to a guru. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and 
you know, we, we have the ability to over time, this is not a quick fix over time, you know, re trench out new neural pathways yes. in our brains. Yes. And there's lots of different ways that you can do that. And we want to always make sure that we're doing that from a place of choice. Yes. So I've even stopped talking about change because everyone's like change and change is hard and, and blah, blah, blah. And you have to change. There's something wrong with you. And mm. you no, know, you're not enough right back to what you were saying. And there's something wrong with you and you need to be, you need to change. No, no, no. You get to decide and make a choice. Yes. Yes. And I hope that it's always based on not someone else saying to you, here's what you have to do, but you identifying for yourself, this does not serve me well. Just like in the example you just gave, you know, that story I had about real estate that I picked up from my upbringing, it's not really serving me very well. And where my husband and I would like to go, you know, in building financial stability and growth. And so that doesn't serve me well. That's very different than someone else coming along and saying to you, you really need to change this. You identified that, that that wasn't serving, supporting where you wanted to go. Right. And I, you know, having, I think I like to also go back to Carol Dweck around growth Mm -hmm. mindset and fixed mindset. And Mm -hmm. so I really try and like stand on her work because it's credible Mm -hmm. and we always want to be moving people toward a growth mindset when they can. Yes. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes there are things that are happening in your life that put you into a place of self-protection and your mindset becomes fixed Mm -hmm. at Mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It is okay. I think the thing that we have to be mindful of is that you can tell a lot of stories when you're in a place of feeling stuck, blocked, or fixed. It can create despair and hopelessness and an idea that oh, this is how it's going to be. And one of the reasons why it's so important to be incredibly self-aware and always be working on your EQ. I know we have a big push about IQ in this part of the world, but really on your EQ is that the awareness of this is a space I'm in right now. And there are things I can do when I choose to move myself out of that space. It's really important for just your own well being, but also because it makes you incredibly vulnerable to predatory marketing if you don't realize that. So I want to go back to our, our friend for a second who. Dave. Which which um, friend is this? Oh, Dave, 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 Dave. the okay. archetype, the archetype of Dave Hollis. What concerned you about what he was saying? Oh my gosh, the list, the list. Okay, so just for those of you who don't have context, Dave Hollis put up a marketing post, a series of marketing posts, where he was selling tickets to an advanced mindset workshop, and I immediately thought, full stop, this is an absolute no. You have no training in psychology, you know, neuroscience, psychiatry, behavioral science, no relevant field whatsoever. So if, we, if we don't know who Dave Hollis is, Dave worked, He first of all, he's the, he's the ex-husband of Rachel Hollis, and he was an executive at Disney. Mm-hmm. And then he left his job to support his wife, Rachel, in taking care of the family and running her business. He is quite a popular influencer in um, in the social media space around, I guess it's lifestyle, I'm not 100% sure. I, I think he's written a book. And so he's, he's like one of these lifestyle influencers mm-hmm. who has built up his credibility through his charisma, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is, which is, and I say this because what I want people to understand is that the things that Dave has, unless he can give you like the strategy, what he has achieved is through his connections, mm-hmm. his charisma, mm-hmm. his access to certain people and certain Mm -hmm. experiences, which is fine, but that doesn't necessarily make him an expert in something specific. Right. 
And, so, and so he's, he's had this life experience and he's, he's now teaching you based on this life experience. I know he hangs out with Brendan Bouchard. Oh yes. I don't and know this if is- he's certified through Brendan's program. Like, I don't really know any of anything about like what his, his credentials actually are here, but so, which is common. So you saw that he was offering something mm-hmm. that was an advanced mindset workshop that looked right. like something that he should have some expertise in and some yes. actual credentials. Right. And I called him out on it. And also this was coming right off of the heels of the announcement that the divorce was happening after one of the last things that they sold and made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on was marriage coaching. Mm -hmm. That was the last thing they sold prior to their announcement of getting divorced. So they duped a lot of people, a lot of people. So I already had my eye on the two of them. So when I saw this, I called him out and I said, basically, this is a huge problem in this industry. Number one, just because you've experienced something does not make you an expert in teaching, coaching, or consulting. And number two, making money off of something you have no education or formal training or formalized experience in is predatory. Who told you that you were qualified to teach, coach, consult, advanced mindset? And he told me his creator. That was his answer to me. His creator qualified him. And I about went through the roof. And I pointed out to him that pastors, rabbis, and leaders in every major faith on the planet are required to go through training before they can even participate in that way in their house of faith. But his creator qualified him to teach advanced mindset. He told me that he was trained by being a Disney executive, by being Destiny's Child's, if you all remember them, where Beyonce came from, tour manager. And that what I really needed to do was enroll in his advanced mindset workshop that clearly that was what I was missing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and here you have it, folks. This is the, it is the incredibly interesting I can become so, oh, just such a deep dive in the analysis of this behavior. Again, it is a really dangerous and highly magnetic combination of narcissistic personality tendencies with entitlement, with patriarchy, and with really predatory practice. And when you combine those things together, you have a very, very dangerous individual in front of you. All right. So I want to start to wrap this up, but I want to take what we've been talking about and I, and I, I'm going to sum it up, right? Like, cause we covered a, a lot of territory. Yes. So if you are someone who is naturally skeptical and you are in some of these spaces and you're like, this is not for me, that's okay. Yes. First and foremost, use your skepticism. And and so what the thing is, is the interesting thing is, is like these people are being told it's their mindset. Oh, yes. That that's why they're not participating or or in these programs or getting further along or, or any of these things. Absolutely. But it's actually, that's actually a a good thing in you. I want you to all be skeptical and, yes. And, and question things and, and ask questions be um, insanely curious, even yeah. if skeptical doesn't feel like a word you can good, embrace, good be curious, always be curious. Don't abandon that ever. And listen to your intuition. And Hey, listen, if you, if you fell into one of these groups and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed, or I really had a bad experience. And I felt like that might've been a waste of my money. I want to ensure you that it's actually not right. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that you've learned something really great from that experience, I think you've gotten an understanding of what you don't want, who you don't want to be like. And I Mm -hmm. think that that's an important part of, of being in growth. 
and being growth oriented. And I want you to forgive yourself if you're, if you're feeling any kind of shame around that, about maybe trusting the wrong person. Betrayal is a, is a hard emotion to navigate. And I want you to be really compassionate with yourselves. Yeah. Please give yourself some grace. Everybody's been duped somewhere (laughs) in life by someone. And that is less about what is inadequate in you and more about that person's tendency, ability, and, and skill in fooling other people. So give yourself a little bit of grace around that, please. Yeah. And then I want to talk a little bit about how can we be a part, because this is really important to me. I want to be, it's really important to me that I train, I help train people to be better consumers Mm -hmm. because when here's the thing about business owners, when you're, you as a business owner are a better consumer, you get higher quality buyers always. This is a part of your sales process. So when you can be discerning, you know, that is really important. So I, I, and, and, The thing is, is that the online space is full of amazing people Mm -hmm. who have great services, who are experts, who are qualified to help you. But what winds up happening is, is we we've created a system, Kelly and I were just talking about this of crony capitalism Mm -hmm. of cronyism where, yeah, you know, the rich get richer. It's the same thing with like the more followers you have, the more followers you get. Right. And so how can we be a part of dismantling some of this if we can be smarter or more more informed Mm -hmm. around things like mindset and things Mm -hmm. like, you know, our mental and emotional health? Mm -hmm. So how can we do this? Couple of things. And you touched on one of them already. And I say this probably every day, if not multiple times a day, because I think it's so important for your female listeners, especially. And that is go back to building a practice of listening to your gut slash intuition slash whatever you want to call that your inner wisdom, learning to trust that and having a habit and practice around consulting your inner wisdom in making Any decision is incredibly important. I think about a time when somebody invited me into a very, as she put it, elite mastermind. It was very high ticket and it was by invitation only. And it was run by a very well-known internet celeb. And the moment she invited me, I actually physically felt like I was going to vomit. And for me, that listening really to what my insides were trying to tell me was incredibly important because six months later, she said, I asked for a full refund from that experience because it was all marketing sales, no delivery. So I've had a practice for a very long time of listening to my intuition, even, and especially when the decision I'm going to make flies in the face of what other people think. And I often make very unpopular decisions that look crazy to other people. And they're always good for me. They are always good for me. So that's number one. And the only way I know how to do that, I'm certainly not an expert in how you do this, but the only way I've found to do this is with quiet and stillness on a regular basis and just turning inward and asking myself, you know, and waiting for an answer. So that's number one. So the second thing is do your due diligence. And I feel like in a right now, at the time we're recording this, it's a really challenging time in history. We're going through a global pandemic. People are vulnerable on so many different fronts. And so I think not in a reactive way, but in a wise and discerning way, I think it's very important that we do due diligence. So go read about people. Go talk to other people about their experience. Go see what somebody's education, CV, resume is. If it's not readily available, don't be afraid to ask for it. I tell people, I would say, I still say this about choosing a therapist, interview, go check out three of them 
If they won't give you a consult call, move on, move on. And so really start to vet people and be willing on your end to be vetted just as hard, just as hard. Because if I go to hire somebody and I find out the thing that you are selling, that your expertise is just that you did it yourself, I'm not going to hire you. I'm just, I'm just not. So the final thing is be willing to become the person that you think is at that high level that you would want to hire. So if you're a little triggered by anything that I've said, go invest in more education, expertise, skill training, knowledge, you know, demonstrable practice growth, you know, in your own self, and then expect that of other people as well. And that's how we start to dismantle this practice in the coaching, consulting, influencer, mentor, I don't even know what we call it anymore, space of popularity being what drives business where we want best practices to drive business. Yeah, I think I think a couple of things that you said are, are really important. So first of all, my ad is be aware that everybody wants to sell to female entrepreneurs right now. Oh, yes. Female business owners, because it's a very quick growing market segment. So please just realize that you are a hot commodity mm-hmm. that very savvy marketers understand the shifts that are happening in the entrepreneur space, in the small business space. And that makes you attractive to people for unfortunately the wrong reasons. You know, I think Kelly, you you know, when you're like this kind of like, who do you want to be? I think is really important because I want to work with somebody as a business growth strategist, call me a coach, call me a consultant, call me whatever you want. I want to work with people who are in their power. Mm -hmm. I don't want your power. I just said this on a sales call before we started this call. I don't want your power. Do not give it to me. I will hand it right back to you. Mm -hmm. I I don't want that responsibility. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Right? So, you know, find a way to be clear about what's in your power And be empowered. And I know that's hard when you're struggling and your confidence is low and you are feeling like there's something wrong with you and that it's not happening fast enough. And that, you know, and and so those things are really easily manipulated. So pause, go have a chat with a friend, a partner, somebody, get yourself into a place where you don't need support, but you want to explore this from the point of the person who you want to become. And I I think you'll enter into a conversation in a much better place. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree. And I think you'll get better results with whoever you work with, right? Because I say to people all the time, don't show up and collapse. I'm not here to pick you up, put you back together. You're not broken. I know somebody along the way probably convinced you that you are, and you might even feel like you are, but you're not, you're, you're not broken. And so when somebody shows up to be helped, serve, supported, and they collapse, it's a very different experience than showing up and saying, I'm having significant challenges or whatever. And I see what's possible for me. I'm just, I, I, what I say all the time is remember what Joseph Campbell taught about the hero and the guide. You are the hero of your own story. You don't need to hire heroes. You need to, or get to, or choose to hire a guide. And anyone who is a coach, consultant, mentor, whatever, if they think they're the hero, or if you're sniffing out that they're stepping in the role of hero, that's a huge red flag because all we should ever want and hope and strive to be is a guide on the path to you becoming a more fulfilled hero of your own story. That is a really good piece of advice, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Because I think, I think that that's part of some of the issue is that, you know, the, a lot of people who have built up these platforms, they did it because they have a desire to be famous mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or they have a desire to be popular. Yes. 
talk about middle school wounds coming out in business. Yes. Right. Or they have a desire to be seen in, in a big way, which is, you know, a bit of ego going on there. For it sure. is. And I don't, I mean, inherently, I don't know if it's a problem as long as you are an extremely emotionally mature and aware person. And you know that um, part of this is just about self-fulfillment, but where is the service part, mm -hmm. right? That's the yeah. part that you've got to keep in check, yeah. really, really in check. And listen, I would talk to people because people are actually having these conversations Yes, behind the scenes. They're not having them forward facing. And, you know, I would ask questions. I would be discerning. I would take your time. I would not allow yourself to be pressured into mm -hmm. making a decision. I very intentionally do not sell with, with any kind of FOMO because I mm -hmm. don't want that in my program. Yep. Because if you come in with FOMO, your your energy of FOMO is going to pervade my program. Agreed. And I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I also don't sell with a, a ton. I don't sell with scarcity mm -hmm. and I don't sell with fake urgency because again, I do not want those things in my program. Mm -hmm. I don't want that energy in my program. So it's my goal just to help you all find the support that you need. and. I'm going to, I'm going to end with, if you DM me or email me your issue, your concern, your challenge, I am more than happy to make a referral mm -hmm. to, if I can't help you, a referral to somebody in my network who I trust, who I believe is credible, who I know has the expertise. And I know that everybody here wants to work with experts because you're all experts in your own Right. I, I, this was another poll that I did on Instagram and we had a whole conversation and my Instagram community defined very clearly what an expert is. Mm -hmm. They're all very aware of that. They're here because they want to do things differently than what they're seeing. And remember that experts pay experts for yes. their expertise. Yes. And that's, and that's how we lift more experts up is we make sure that the experts are getting paid so they can invest in marketing, so they can invest in sales, so they can invest in their, in their business building so that they can become more visible and get their true expertise out there. Because when we pay people who have manufactured their authority, mm through pay to play strategies, through excessive Facebook ads, through whatever kind of internet marketing tricks there are, then we're taking away resources from the experts who can actually help. Mm -hmm. So that's my, um, that's going to be my final thought. Kelly, give us your final thought and give us where we can find, where they can find you, where they can. Oh, thank you. Well, I first want to just you. echo what you said. We, it is a company policy for us that if we are not the people to help you, we will not just sort of send you on your way and say, Hey, good luck with that. I really do take as Tara does a lot of time to cultivate relationships with other people in the space because I do not refer if I do not trust. So same thing, message me anytime, send an email to info at kellyruda.com. And we are happy to get you connected. If we cannot help you, we are happy to get you connected to someone that we trust and know. Do you have a lot of therapists in your network? I do. And I also strongly recommend if you're in the United States to use the psychology today therapist directory because their search capacity is, it's amazing. You can search based on location, what kind of insurance you have, what kind of certification and training the person should have a million things. So I often send people who are not in my area, I'm in North Carolina to that particular website um, because you can do such a thorough search. Okay. Awesome. Cause I am getting requests for therapists. Yes. So. Oh yes, yes, yes. So I strongly recommend that you use that. That was the only marketing I ever did in my 20 years of practice was I was listed on that directory uh, because it's, it's excellent. 
the thought that I want to leave people with is this. There has never been more of, I think, a need in recent history for people to have really, really brave conversations. And I want to remind you that bravery is not, it's more an action than a feeling. We can't wait until we feel brave or wait until we feel fearless or wait until we feel courageous to say and do things that are meaningful, that are aligned with our ethics. I've gotten the threats. I've gotten publicly, openly bashed on you know, Instagram lives with thousands of people watching. I have gotten, you know, it's unbelievable. But that can't be the reason you don't speak your truth. You've got to speak your truth. And if you're super, super triggered by it, please get support. And if being public and visible isn't your thing, no problem. Then have private conversations. Oh have God, conversations please. with your That's inner great. circle, with your yes. trusted friends, colleagues, advisors, because the only way we're going to drown out this damaging noise and predatory practice and marketing is by having more of these conversations and connecting to more people who are having these conversations. Because if not, you're going to think, oh, I'm just over here thinking this myself, or there's just two of us, when really there's a whole lot of us and we just need to get connected. And then the people who feel comfortable being more visible about it can do so. And those of you who are more, you know, I'm, I'm fine being adjacent or I feel safer being just sort of behind that conversation, you can assume that we all have our roles that we can step into. You have to step into the one that's most aligned for you. But please don't skip the conversation. Have the conversation. And then if, again, if you don't feel safe being public facing about it, hand it off to somebody who does. But it's time for us to be disruptive. And we only do that by being brave. You just sparked, crystallized something that I have been struggling with, that I've been feeling that I haven't been able to language Mm. around I'm watching people become less engaged and not have conversations. And I'm not talking about public conversations. I'm talking about smaller conversations, one-on-one conversations. And that silence, I'm realizing that that it's not the lack of engagement that's bothering me. It's the silence. Mm-hmm. Because when we're silent, they win. Well, we're also, I believe when we're silent, we're complicit. And that is problematic for me because I can't, for me, that's something that just hits me so deep at my core to know that in silence, I actually made something worse. I can't sleep at night over that. You have to find what's meaningful for you and where this touches the edges of your value system, right? For me, it's that. For you, it might be something else. Mm -hmm. And you have to discover that for yourself, right? Because we all have those core values that are like, oh, if I go against that, I literally can't put my head on the pillow at night. And so you, that's what it is for me. And so find yours, right? Find yours. But silence is, it's really dangerous. And in some situations it's life-saving, but in many, many situations, it is insanely problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's what I hope it inspired as we roll out of here. I hope it inspired you to think differently. I hope it inspired you to realize that, you know, if you feel any of the ways that Kelly and I were talking about, that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing from a lot of people about how lonely they feel, um, that you're not alone. I hope this encourages you to start conversations, even if they're private, even if they're small, even if they're just one-on-one but to engage in this dialogue in some way. Uh, I hope if you found this helpful, you will follow Kelly, that you will share this episode, that you will reach out and start a conversation with me or Kelly. And thank you for all being here. Thank you for all allowing Kelly and I to be the purveyors of hard and uncomfortable truths and being willing to stay in this conversation. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Kelly. If you've found this podcast valuable, help us develop more bold leaders in the world by sharing this episode with your friends, colleagues, and other bold leaders. 
Also, if you haven't done so already, please leave a review. I consider reviews like podcast currency, and it's the one thing you can do to help us out here at the Bold Leadership Revolution HQ. We would be so grateful for it. Special thanks goes to Stacey Harris from Uncommonly More, who is the producer and editor of this podcast. Go check them out for all your digital marketing and content creation needs. Be sure to tune into the next episode to help you embrace your ambition and leave the grind behind. 